Hello everyone, this is Amin from 3DZ. In this video, I'll show you how to convert a curve to a railway and control it via customizable settings, all by using geometry nodes. Let's get started. First, let's talk about the railway parts that are used in the projects. The main part here is these two tracks that we call railroads. We have also these planks that have made by wood but they can be also concrete or even metal another part is these metallic fasteners that are used to fix the railroad with the sleepers the last part is the ballast the ballast is these pebbles or small stones that are under the sleepers going back to blender now to make the tutorial very long and to focus on the geometry nodes, I have already created three collections for the sleepers and the fasteners. You can create them by yourself or you can just download them from the link in the description. Before we move on, let's take a look at this wooden sleepers UV mapping. As you see, every one of them took a different place in the image texture. So we create that variation between the wooden sleepers in the railway. We have also this simple concrete sleeper. And we have three fasteners with different metal textures from the fine to the rusty one. You can download all the textures that are used from the link in the description. Now let's make the railroad curve. First we hide the previous work and we add a new collection. And we call it Railroad. We add an image reference and we choose our blueprint. We add a plane. We make a lock cut in the middle. We remove the left vertices and we mirror it. Now we remove the top vertices and we move the others to the position 0. We scale it to 147, which is 0. 0.0. 7 for each side. Now we scale the image reference and we start extruding the vertices to take the shape of the image reference. You can make it as high poly as you want. We hide the image reference and then we convert this mesh to a curve. Finally, we change its name to Railroad. The next thing is the ballast. We add a new collection and we call it ballast. We add a plane, loop cut in the middle and we remove these vertices. Mirror and we remove the top vertices. We move the other to the position 0 and 1.28 extrude and extrude. Minus zero four five. Next, we convert it to curve and finally we change its name to ballast. Now, let's add a new collection. We call it Railway and we add a curve, a Bezier curve. We scale it in the edit mode. And now we go to the geometry nodes and we click new let's start by the sleepers layout frame and sleepers now curve to points and Instance on points and we put this here. Let's pick now some instances. Collection info concrete, concrete, simple concrete. So we need to check this, this, and we pick instance. Now we fix the rotation 
transform 90 degree minus 90 degree let's make it bigger now length 0.6 and we put it in the input we change its name to sleepers spacing and minimum 0.5 maximum 0.8 we add another one and we call it sleepers type integer default one and minimum one maximum two one will be the the wooden slippers and two will be the concrete slippers so what you do is slipper type and compare equal we need to switch it switch when it's true so equal one we need another collection and we choose the wooden it's if it is true we put the wooden one else we put the concrete nice now let's go to Geometry node when it's one, there is some problem. Oh, we didn't do that. Equal one, equal two, concrete wooden, concrete wooden, and the spacing. Now let's make the railroad. We first add the frame that we call railroad we duplicate the group input and we make a curve to match to mesh node curve to mesh now let's bring our railroad curve objects info and railroad we join the sleepers and the railroad we use join geometry as we can see it's flipped so we need to use the transform node transform 180 degree the high of this slipper is 0 0.1 and we need to add the minus because it's flipped the standard spacing between the two tracks is 8 feet which is equal to 1.435 divided by 2 it's equal to this number Let's make the second one. Join geometry and minus. Good. Now, while we have two types of sleepers, the concrete and the wooden one, and they don't have the same height, so we need to make it customizable. So what you do is sleeper type and compare. If the sleeper type equal one, switch. It has to be vector. We need to use a combine node because we will need later com combine xyz if it's true let's treat the first one 
so we use the same number we put it in here the high is minus point one the second case is zero point two five and we put it in the false now we link it and there we go it takes the high of the second type of sleepers okay let's do the same for the second one but with positive values now when we change the sleepers type wait we have some issue in here yes we need to link this two when we change the sleepers type our railroad will take the high of the sleeper we also can make the spacing between these two sleepers customizable so what you can do is to add a new input and we call it sleepers spacing it will be floats in the first case you will take it immediately to here so reroutes we put one here in the x and the second here let's use the same number that we used earlier but the second one it has to be negative so what to do is we just need to use the math node multiply minus one and we plug it in the x now we can control the spacing next we add the material to these tracks first we need to get the factor and the length of this curve to do that we need to store name and attribute and let's call it y or x and then spline parameter and we get the length and we get the y we change this name to y spline parameter shift d and we get the factor the next thing is to add the set material node we cannot use this materials that we used with fasteners because it's not using the x and y that we stored here so what to do is first let's add a new material let's give it the same name of this one and we add g n in the beginning geometry node and let's first remove these ones and copy the same nodes from the old metal rusty and we just need to change this node so we add our x and y attribute x shift d y and combine y and x and we block it here now let's change the texture in the geometry node and here we go we have our texture but we need to flip it to look better rotate in the z axis 90 degree now we need to add that clean metal that is in the top of the railroad so what to do is first let's bring the metal white or the metal clean and we copy these nodes 
control C and we go here and control V now we mix them using mix shader we black this here now we need to add an image texture to be the fact of the two. By the way, we need to use the same nose that we used for the first metal. Shift D and we plug it in the vector. We plug this vector also to vector of the new image texture that we use and we click new we call it metal mask and we click ok next we go to texture paint we choose our metal mask and we draw with the white pencil a line it's almost in the middle and here we go we have our clean metal now maybe we need to make it larger and we are done we do the same thing for the second type of the rusty metal and for the clean one we don't need to mix any textures or materials, we just need to add these two attributes X and Y. Going back to geometry node, let's try to use the other types of metal. We have the rusty one and the second type of rusty metal and the clean one. Now we add another input and we call it railroad age it has to be integer first default 1 minimum 1 and maximum 3 and railroad compare if if the railroad age equal 1, so we use the clean texture or the clean metal switch. We need to bring the clean metal here. True. Else, what if railroad age equal not 1, so we copy this two and we plug it in the false now if railroad age equal 2 we put the second type of rusty metal in the true else we put the third type so you need to plug this here and this in here and finally we plug the output of the first switch with the joint geometry let's try it one and two and three we put all this nodes in the frame to make it more organized and there we go now let's move on to the fasteners let's first add a frame and call it fasteners shift D and duplicate the group input next curve to points and instance on points 
Next, we have to get our fasteners. So we write objects info. And we check or we choose our fasteners. First one, second, and the third. Fasteners Rusty and Fasteners Rusty 2. And now we need to pick one of these fasteners. First, we need to check as instance not to lose any texture from the fastener. Okay, we get the railroad age, layouts, and compare if it's equal to one. Switch. We put the clean fastener in the true. Else, we need another tool like this one. We need some space here. And we plug from the reroute to A and we choose the second one. If the railroad age equal to, so we add the second type of fastener, which is rusty. And finally, the third one, we put it in default. The output from the switch to the false. Next, we add transform node. And while we have two sides of these tracks, so we need two of these nodes transform and we join them join geometry and we plug it in the instance the next step is to move the fasteners to the right place so let's first plug this and add combine xyz for the first one and another one for the second. We plug it into isolation. And now we need to get the Y and the Z. Let's plug this in here so we can see the results. Now, as you can see, it is moving. In here the fasteners high is depend on the slippers type if the slippers type equal one so we compare equal one and switch we need it to be float so if slippers type equal one the high will be point one else it will be 0.25 and we plug it in dz next we need to move it to one of the sides and this is depend on the railroad spacing in here so we go to railroad spacing routes. One of them will plug it immediately to the Y here, but the second one has to be negative, so we multiply it by one using the math node and we plug it. The last thing is to go to curve to point node and change this to length, and we put slipper spacing in the length. Now, let's try it. Let's try all these settings. The first one, slipper spacing. Slipper type. And railroad spacing. The last one is the railroad age. There is something else that we need to fix here. Is that the rotation of these fasteners. So what to do is, first we need to get the rotation from the curve to point to the instance on points. 
and then we add a transform node rotation in z axis 90 degree and rotation in the y axis minus 90 degree and it have been fixed now finally let's make the ballast we add a frame and we call it ballast shift d of the group input we add the new node that's called curve to mesh now we need to get the ballast object info and search for it ballast curve we need to plug the mesh to the join geometry to see the results there we go but it's flipped so we need to add a transform node rotate in the z-axis 180 degree the next thing is to add the material go into shading new and gn ballast we got our texture images we need to change the texture coordinate to the attributes x and y attributes x exactly like we did before y and combine vector in vector going back to geometry node we store the x and y by using store named attributes x spline parameter to get the length shift t and we get the factor and we store it in the y What next is to add a node that called set material. We choose our material GN ballast and here we go. But it doesn't look like we want so we just need to scale it in the X axis to something like 0.2. To make it look better, we need to also to add a resample curve. But in this case, we have two types of resampling. One of them is for the normal ballast and the other is for the bumpy ballast. First, let's add a new input and call it ballast bump. and compare if the ballast bump equals zero switch we add resample curve the first one length 0 0.01 for the bumpy ballast and the second just use evaluated false to plug this here and we plug it here finally we plug the output in the geometry also we need to do the same thing for the second side of the curve Opening this here, shift D, and do plug the output in the geometry, geometry curve and curve. Let's take a look on it. We need to plug something else. 
results in the switch. Now, if we change ballast bump to one, you will see all these small faces. Okay, what next? Now let's add that bumpy look that we want. Ballast bump. Compare. And switch. We plug the geometry in the true. This is the first case. And we put it in, in the joint geometry. If the ballast bump equals zero, set material in the true and it goes to joint geometry. Else, we'll do something else in the false case. So we add set position. This node will help us to give a different height to vertices. First, let's guess the position. Next, we need to set the offsets. The offsets will depend on the image displacement that we used before. So we use image texture and search for the image displacement. We pick it. It has to take this exactly the same shape of this material. By using the X and Y and scaling it in the X axis. Going back to geometry node, we need to add attributes, named attributes and call it x another one that's called y we combine them but we need to scale this x before plugging it here so we add math node multiply 0 0.2 next we separate x y and z because we only need the z here we combine them again and we plug the vector in the offset let's see the result we need to decrease the z a little bit so we add a math node and we divide it by about six It looks good now, but these small rocks don't have to be smooth like that. So we add set shade smooth node and inject the shade smooth. We have something wrong here and it's easy to be fixed just by increasing the resolution of the curve to 64. We need also to change the height of this ballast. We need to decrease it a little bit using transform. We can decrease it to something like minus 0.05. The second case where there is no bump, also we need to decrease it to 0.05. Let's see the final results. There you go. We reached the end of the video. I wish you found this tutorial helpful. Thank you for watching.